a man, a man must have a game plan. Otherwise, he's just drifting around without any aim, and that's no good of a place to be. So I woke up today with the intention of exploring more of my options about getting into a more communal living situation. And first and foremost, I need money. I need to pay off my car, and that will happen in the next year or two. I gotta trust the universe, trust the universe. So I'm looking up like free land and cost of permaculture and but before I go into any anything about that, the short answer is it takes a lot of money to live like off grid by yourself. The some of the calculation I just saw from this other YouTuber, off grid permaculture, that's his name on YouTube, is it costs like anywhere from twelve hundred dollars to uh, one hundred thousand when you take into account like piping and and you know if you didn't want to go the full rustic route like you can live like a rustic like i've seen these as intentional communities where they boil all their own water and you know dig hole. like it's pretty you know primitive you can do that but it's probably not going to be very comfortable i mean you want to be fairly comfortable and i want to be in a, and you want to be around other people there's there's also the option of a farm caretaking but it's very laborious and you're working you know all week there's a lot of work and it's not necessarily for yourself. It's a good option, I think, to get as a way to get out of the city, but it's not full grown living your own lifestyle, like you're you're doing something else for other people. Okay, but before I go into all this, this is this is a taste of our future. This is why I'm heading in this direction. So this is what you can expect in large swaths of the country. And where do you think, again, I've said this before, these people are going to go. They're going to go to the cities. They're going to come for your food. They're going to come for the shelves and the jobs. There's too, there's, there's going to be a bottleneck. There's too many people. Not all of them are going to get through. So check out this. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It is a dire situation in Louisiana with no signs of relief for those hit by Hurricane Ida. Tonight, more than a million people are without power and could be for weeks, which means no air conditioning, even as heat indexes reach the triple digits. Many have no drinking water and the gasoline. Well, it's in short supply. And then there's this breaking news. The mayor of, mayor New, of New Orleans, Orleans says, says there will be a curve Curfew tonight, tonight for the for city, city of nearly 400,000. Well, we are getting a clearer look at the damage. Many homes were no match for the storm's 150 mile an hour winds. And the stories we're hearing are just heartbreaking. Many have lost everything. There's also some new details about hundreds of rescues made as the storm surge left entire neighborhoods underwater. The official death toll is now four. Two of the victims were killed when a highway collapsed in Mississippi. Our team of correspondents is following every angle of this developing story, including where now tropical depression Ida. But they're learning it's one thing to survive Ida's winds. It's another to survive the aftermath. The full impact of Ida's direct hit on places like Grand Isle is only now coming into focus. 165 mile an hour wind gusts and nearly a foot of rain shredded the island. A power substation was blown to pieces. And the word tonight to those who got out in time, don't even begin to think about coming back yet. The schools are not open, the businesses are not open, the hospitals are slammed. There's not water in your home and there's not gonna be electricity. Tonight, more than a million customers all along Southeast Louisiana, mostly in New Orleans, are still without power and could be for as long as a month. In southern Mississippi, Ida left nearly 60,000 customers in the dark. It will take days to assess the full damage to power transmission lines, far longer to make repairs. I was in the line an hour and we only moved 10 feet. In New Orleans, lines for gas stretched over a mile as frustrated residents waited five hours to fill up. It's rough. Everybody's fighting over gas. <laughs> Already stretched thin by the pandemic, 11 hospitals were forced to evacuate patients during the storm. One remains closed, 51 others are operating on generators. All this as a heat index today was expected to hit 105. Some days you live in the water, some days the water lives on you. you know, and, and, and unfortunately, this is a situation where the water's living on them. In hard hit Jefferson Parish, a community already accustomed to flooding, Water lines, power lines, and sewer lines all need. Okay, so that's a great example. This is a great example of cascading collapsing infrastructure, whereby which one system collapses on the next. That's exactly what the name implies. And you see all the people waiting at the gas station 
What about when there's no food? It's going to start getting violent. You saw how, how violent they were. People are getting desperate. Not a fun situation. So then I'm looking into what if I could, like, what's the another cost-effective way of getting off-grid? And I found these intra-shelters prefab shelters you know obviously they use them for emergency fema catastrophe type situations but some of them are actually really well built you could live in like this one alaskan-based inter shelter like this is a lot of money quick and cost but effective this would be ideal for a multitude of situations to have like, like emergency a dome relief, pod community housing, camping getaway or military post their shelters feature a dome-shaped design Consisting of hard sided composite super panels. sweet. Intershelter dome is a frameless structure with the strength of a standard building, but the mobility of a tent. One dome can be assembled by two people in less than four hours with nothing more than a screwdriver, wrench, and a stepladder. Intershelter's 50 year lifespan and ability to withstand 40 feet of snow and 160 mile an hour winds make it well suited for difficult climates. Domes can be equipped with every component needed for a comfortable stay, including a kitchen, shower, loft, and off-grid systems. They are available in two sizes, 14 feet in diameter with 154 square foot floor space and 20 feet in diameter with 314 square foot floor space. Ample lighting from the windows and glass doors keeps the interiors bright. The cost of the larger version is about $12,000 for the shell, plus add-on costs for the flooring system, insulation, and so on. When assembled in a group, the intershelter creates a tight-knit community of domed homes that can be connected to make larger layouts. The company was established in 1992 with the desire to get homeless veterans off the streets, to make them element resistant, and to provide a comfortable stay even in harsh conditions. Designed for the heat of the desert, the shift pod works equally well in the snow. Reflective fabrics keep the heat out and the warmth of your body in while it is still cold out. These four season shelters are built to last and provide years of comfort while having tent-like mobility and ease of use. The latest iteration, Shift Pod 3, is built on an integrated carbon fiber frame and hub system, allowing for a quick setup and making it robust. The special all-season multi-layered fabric system is heat reflective and insulated with mildew protection and hydrophobic coatings to protect against the elements. Standard Shift Pod 3 stands at 6 feet 8 inches tall in the center and with 107 square foot floor space. We know what's coming. We know the direction that we got to start going into, which is self-sustainable living, permaculture, regenerative farming, all of that. That's how we'll survive another year or two in the 2030s. I'm pretty safe here in the mountains, but this is just what I came upon today, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for subscribing. Talk to you later.